some praise. Hallelujah. Blessed Jesus. Babandiani. Wakaita semi Kufanirwa Neru Mito Babandiani Wakaita semi Kufa say 
Blessed be God. Wealth and divine morning everywhere in the world where you are joining us. We thank the Lord today, this morning that we are here for our morning service. The good Lord bless you wherever you are. Just show us by the raising of your hand and the declaration in a nation where you are so that we may begin to pray and pray for you. For a minute, I just want us to pray this morning. Father, we thank you today. We are gathered here in your presence. We thank you this morning that, Lord, your grace is all over this place. We bless you today. You're an amazing God. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for the power. We thank you for the anointing. We release of your power, Lord, into every household, into every house, into every place, Lord, oh God, where the word is flowing to right now. I pray in Jesus' name. The glory of the Lord is moving in a mighty way. The power of God is shifting things. I pray to, today in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the good Lord bless you. Wherever you are, can you just begin to bless the Lord this morning? We thank God. I greet and welcome every one of you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm excited in my spirit today. I just want to say to somebody, you must know that the Lord is on your side. It doesn't matter what you go through. You must know he said it in his word. You will never leave you nor forsake you. And even this very morning, I want you to hold on to the truth of the word of the Lord. And I want you to stand on the truth of the word of the Lord. We are continuing to teach on spiritual warfare. I want you to understand that warfare is real in our lives. Actually, life is a battlefield. You must understand this. Never, never, never be cheated. Never be taken advantage of by the devil. The Bible calls him Satan. Satan means the adversary. Satan means he who is against. So you must actually know as a child of God that there is the enemy out there. He is not happy about your life. He is not happy about you serving God. He is not happy about you being a child of God. He's not happy about you having inheritance in the kingdom of God. So you must know it is real. Today, I just want to do you a favor today. My God, in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I want to teach you a secret, a secret of spiritual warfare. I want you to know this in the name of Jesus Christ. I have been teaching you about the weapons of warfare, but today I just felt compelled in my spirit to speak to somebody about the secret of spiritual warfare, the secret of dealing with the enemy. I want you to know, if you, don't under, if you fail to understand the kind of battle or how this battle goes about, you will struggle, you will give up. At times, you will even think that God is not there. So today, I want you to give you this secret. What I'm going to teach you today is something that I've gone through. It's something that I know. It's something that I have, you know, I have, I, 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 I have gone over and over in my life, and I know this is how it works. When you fight the enemy or the battle in the realm of the spirit is different from the battle in the natural when we, we see battles in the natural, usually when people are fighting or two people are fighting, they exchange blows. You release yours, the other one releases theirs. But it doesn't work like that in the realm of the spirit. I want you to understand this. If you understand this, you will, you will have victory in your life. In the realm of the spirit, the battle is not the exchange of, of blows. No, we don't fight like that. In the realm of the spirit, the, the other part is given a time or a season where they have to attack. And the other one is also then given a season where they have to attack. So it's not an exchange. It's not the other one attacking and the other one coming and attacking at the same time. There is a season where it is the enemy's turn. And then there is a season when it is your turn. You can read even in the word. You'll actually discover that it is not an exchange. It's not you fire, I then fire back. No, it doesn't work like that. The 
enemy, most of the times, you actually realize that there is a season when it is the enemy to attack. And also, there come a season when it is now you hit back, my God in the heaven. So, I want you to understand this today. So, that you are able to to, to decode, to discern what's going on in your walk with God and even in your life. So what happens is that there is no battle that comes your way without the approval of G-O-D. Give me an amen there if you hear me. There is no battle that comes your way without the approval of God. Hallelujah. There is no warfare that comes your way without the heavens giving it an approval. So, the enemy is not allowed just to jump into your space. The devil is not allowed just to come against you. He has to seek for authority. He has to seek for approval. And God has got to wear and see the kind of an attack, the kind of of, of warfare coming your way. And God has got to approve it and say to the enemy, you can go ahead. You can go ahead, my God in the heaven. So you must actually understand there is no battle that comes your way that you cannot handle. There is no warfare that comes your way that you cannot overcome. Because according to how we fight in the realm of the spirit, the enemy has got to be given approval to come after your life. I don't know how many hear me. So whatever you are going through right now, you must know that your God, you must know that the heavenly father has weighed that thing, has looked at that thing, has sized up that thing, and he knows you can handle it. You can come out of that thing, coming out better, coming out stronger, coming out victorious and being celebrated in the name of Jesus Christ. So you must understand this, that point number one, there is no, there is, there is no battle, whatever you can call it, that comes your way as a child of God born again and the God is taken by surprise. So this is how they fight, how we fight in the realm of the spirit. Usually the enemy is given the first opportunity. To attack. Let's read First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 18. No temptation has sized you. Except that which is common to men. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can handle. But when you are tempted. He will also provide a way out. So that you can stand up under it. The good Lord bless you. I want you to know that enemy cannot touch you without God having allowed him. I'll also use Job chapter 1 verse 12. Job chapter 1 verse 12. The Lord said to Satan, very well then, everything he has is in your hands. But on the man himself, do not lay a finger. Then Satan went away from the presence of the Lord. My God, the enemy comes. He wants, he is after Job's life. But when he comes, he yet to seek for authority from God. And then God says here, he gives the enemy the parameters, how far he can go in the battle. He tells him, you can touch the man, but don't lay your finger on him. You can touch everything. The Bible, another version says, don't lay a finger on his spirit. Another way, one says, on the man himself. Let me talk to you. The devil, when he comes against you, he, he, he comes as if he's the best. He comes as if he's amazing. But what you must know is that he has been given parameters. He has been given levels and boundaries. He cannot, he cannot override when he's coming against you. And I want you to know today that there is a season when the enemy is allowed to come attacking. And when that season comes, you realize that everything may turn around and the things are just 
upside down. Let me tell you for an example. You may find that you are attacked on your finances. When you are saying, oh, my finances are under attack. Something else is, uh, your children are under attack. When you are saying this is under attack, he is moving to another level because the enemy, he knows he's behind time. So he tries to touch everywhere. He tries to beat down your everything. The Bible says he attacked Job's children. He attacked his harvest. He attacked his body. He attacked everything around. He attacked his servant. I'm here to say to you, there is a season when the enemy comes against your life. In this battle, you are fighting against the enemy. But you must know that he has been given the first chance. And the first chance is fighting. And the enemy is buffeting you. And the enemy is beating you up. And the enemy is beating your things up. You must understand it is time. It is season to do this. The challenge with this part of the battle is that it looks, it looks to you like the enemy is winning. It looks to everyone else like the enemy, you are finished. The enemy is completely, completely finishing you off. You, because the enemy comes against you. If he is using one weapon, the, the situation comes, gets from west, from bed to west. Things just start to fall apart. And you don't understand, my brother. You are going unto prayer, but it's like your prayer is going nowhere. You take up a song. It's like a song is going nowhere. You take up the word, and the word of declaration is like it's going nowhere. All you must understand is that it is well. It is only the enemy's chance. It is only the enemy's season. It is only the enemy's moment. Yes, God has given him the authority and the right to attack. But one thing you must understand is that there is also your time that is coming. So the enemy comes against you. And one thing you must know about the devil is that the devil is talkative. The enemy is talkative. He will tell you that I'm finishing you. He will show you things. You know, he will show you situations. And he will tell you that there is no way out. The devil is a liar. So is his mother-in-law. The devil is a liar. I want to say to you today, actually you'll be panicking. I don't know what you are going against right now. I don't know what you are fighting in your life. I don't know what is coming against you. I don't know what is coming against your spiritual life. I don't know what is coming against your finances. What is attacking your marriage? What is attacking your ministry? But I'm here just to tell you, this is only part one of the, the game. It is only the first season. It is the enemy who is on the attacking mode. And as a child of God, you must understand. God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Even if you go through the fire, I am with you. Even when you go through the waters, they will not carry you away. What is God saying? He said about this. Whatsoever you are going, whatsoever is fighting you, God has already looked at it from Alpha to Omega. And he knows you're going to make it. You're going to come out of that thing. I'm here to prophesy today that you will, you will make it. Elema Sakata, that thing will not destroy you. That thing cannot bring you down. It's just a trial. It's just a test. It's just a temptation. My God. I can, I will, I will use these case studies quickly. My first case study, we will look at Goliath in First Samuel chapter 17. From verse 10. From verse 10, we'll just do 10, verse 10, verse 11, verse 16. The Philistines said, this day I defy the ranks of Israel. Give me a man and let us fight each other. Verse 11. On hearing the Philistines' words, Saul and all the Israelites were dismayed and terrified. Verse 16. For 40 days, the Philistine came forward every morning and evening and took his stand. My God in the heavens. I want to tell you this one thing. Goliath boasted, bullied, defiled, shamed, threatened, 
and caused pain to Saul and the army of Israel. Every morning, every evening, he would wake up and begin to shout and begin to defy them and begin to, to abuse them and begin to bully them. My God, can you imagine for 40 days, for 40 days, sometimes, God, you see what, can I, can, I, can I make you understand something? We serve a God who is too fair. Our God is too fair. Our God is too just. Our God is too good. So sometimes he gives the enemy even a longer period for his season to attack. Goliath had 40 days to attack the children of Israel. For 40 days. He's coming against him. Give them, give me a man. He, he's calling all the men. He's calling them, you are ladies. You are, you are useless. If you have a man sent for 40 days, day and night, morning and evening, he was coming against them. I don't know how long your Goliath has been coming after your life. I just want to tell you this very day that don't forget that God was, God was already anointing a David somewhere to arrive on the 41st day. After 40 days of Goliath boasting, after 40 days of Goliath terrorizing the, the Israelites, after 40 days of, de- of Goliath doing as he want, Goliath looked like he was undefeatable. Goliath looked like no one can bring him down. Goliath looked like he can finish anyone. His armory was amazing, but God somewhere was preparing a David for Goliath. Goliath was given 40 days to shine. He was given 40 days to make noise. He was given 40 days to do his nonsense. But you know what, Makatalama has Our God is too big for any situation. Our God, David, didn't need 40 days to terrify Goliath. One day, one day was enough. I want to talk to somebody. Don't listen to what the devil is talk- has been telling you. There is a David that God is preparing against the Goliath. The 40 days uh, while it's the Goliath is shining. David is learning something uh, in the forest with the sheep. Uh, David is learning how to defeat a lion. David is learning how to defeat a bear. And Goliath didn't know that his days are numbered. I'm here to tell you something. The enemy just knows how to fight. But he doesn't know how long he has been given. He doesn't know how long his days are expiring. Just like right now, the devil does not know that his days are quickly expiring. A trumpet is about to sound. And he shall be bound. And he shall be thrown, Michael Tamahashe, into the pit of fire. He doesn't know that. And Goliath didn't know that he his days were only marked from 1 to 40. He was not going to go beyond that. I'm here to talk to you. Your battle is already marked. They are already boundaries. The devil cannot go beyond the boundary. I'm here to prophesy to somebody. I have been sent of the Lord. Just to speak to your life. It doesn't matter how long the battle has taken. It doesn't matter how many days or how many years. It has been, Goliath has been boasting. But I'm just telling you there is a day that is prepared for Goliath. And I'm here to decree and I declare that day to somebody's life. That your tears, God is wiping them away. That your sorrow, God is taking it away. Your, 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 your mourning shall be turned into dancing. If you hear me say yes, 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 yes. Lele Masatoka. Lord, we bless you. Let's go to the book of Job. I just want to conclude right now. Job chapter 23, verse 12. Hey, Bahash. Let me talk to, to you about Job. It was nine months. For nine months, Job went through the most painful vexation you can think about you can never imagine from losing everything that you have your body is attacked by boils his wife is turning against him and the worst thing that happened to job then there come some people called friends who were his enemies 
when you have friends like Job's friends, you don't even need the devil. They are more than Satan themselves. Elpaz, Bildad, and Zopa, they, they were the, the worst people because they also started to attack Job. They started to mock Job. When Job was about to get spiritual, when Job was about to get strength, one of them will attack him. And Job will start from afar. When the spirit of Job is about to pick, the other one will attack him. They came not to comfort him, but they came only, only to make his life worse. I'm here to say to somebody, you, are, you have to be careful about people who come like friends, but they drag you into the, the mud of the enemy. So Job in this instant, Job in this instant, he is in trouble. My God, he is under attack, not for one day, not for two days, not for one month, not for two months. For nine months, for nine months, Job is under attack. Why is he under attack? He is under attack because of his perfect. He is under attack because of his holiness. He is under attack because of his purity. He is under attack because of his walk with God. I understand Job's frustration. I understand his confusion. He was attacked for being a holy man. Let me talk to you. The enemy doesn't, doesn't, doesn't wait for you to do something wrong to him. Just because you want to be like God, it's a, it's a case enough for him to start fighting you. But I want to say to you this very day, my God, God is going to fight your battles. Job was attacked for being righteous. My God, I understand why he's confused. Didn't God say you are the apple of my eye? Didn't God say I will fight your battles? Didn't God say my angels shall surround you as the mountain surrounds Zion? Didn't God say the angel of the Lord surrounds the rushes? Didn't God say I will command my angels and they will carry you in their hands so that your feet will not strike against the stone? I understand Job. I understand his pain. Because what he was going through, he was not promised. That was not the promise. That was not his portion. I'm here to talk to somebody. Yes, when we go through warfare, it's not our portion. But the enemy tries to come out of our life. And God uses that battle. He uses the warfare as an excuse to promote us. The good Lord bless you. Say yes, 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 yes. God bless you. Job chapter 23 verse 1. Job 23 verse 1. Job. Then Job replied. Even today my complaint is bitter. His hand is heavy. In spite of my groanings. You see. You see. If only I knew where. Yamando kolebe riakatalaba. Even today, my complaint is bitter. His hand is heavy in spite of my groaning. Verse 3. If only I knew where to find him. Let me talk to you. Let me talk to you. When you are under attack, when it is the season of the enemy, it's like even God is not there. It's like your prayer is going nowhere. Beloved, I've been there. I know what I'm talking about. It's like, you know, what, what you confess, what you believe is just a fraud. But I'm here to talk to you. The word of God can never fail you. God can never fail you. It's only a season. It's only a moment. It's only a time. You are going through this. You are winning over this. You are winning over this situation. He says, Job now can't even see God. My God in the heaven. My God. Verse 4. He says, if I could see God, I would state my case before him and fill my mouth with arguments. 
You can tell this man is terrified. You can tell this man is under pressure. You can tell this man is being vexed. The enemy is coming after his life. Hey, shalom, aha, riya katalaba. Mayando ko lebe, riyando ko. Yakatele, mayando ko le mahase. Emma satoka. Give me verse 11. Give me verse 11. Give me verse 11. Hear what he says. I like Job. He says, my feet have closely followed his steps. I have kept to his ways. Without turning aside, I love you, Job. Verse 12. Verse 12. I have not departed from the commandments of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my daily bread. Listen to what Job is saying. Job is saying, I have not shifted. I have not shifted. Even though things are attacking me, even though I can feel God, even though it's coming left, right, and center, the war is all over me. The war is in my heart, is in my spirit, is in my mind, is in my flesh. I am under attack, but I have not departed from the word of the Lord. I have maintained my integrity. Give me verse 23. My God, my God, my God in the heaven. Yamandoko yebe riakatalaba ilandoko ya maya kaya I hear what the Lord is saying. I hear. Job goes on to say, I go forward, but I can't see God. I go backwards, but I can't see God. He says, but one thing I know, he is watching over me. Let me tell you, there is this, there is this level, there is this state of an attack when the enemy is coming after your life. But you, uh, you know, you look for God and it's like you can't see God. You go to the front, God is not there. You go to your left, God is not there. You go backward, God is not there. But I love what Job says. He says, God is watching over me. And when he is done with me, I shall come out like gold. I shall come out expensive. I shall come out better. I want to talk to you, my, uh, my brother my sister. I want to talk to you child of God. What you are going through is not going to kill you. What you are facing is not going to defeat you. Don't you know that when we want to purify gold, it has to go through the fire. It goes through the furnace. I want to say to somebody right now, whatever you are going through, it is an excuse. It is a setup to purify you. When you come out of that situation, you shall come out better. You shall come out stronger. You shall come out more expensive. You shall come out a quality product. Who am I preaching to this very day? The good Lord bless somebody today. Now I want to talk to somebody. What do you do at that moment in that time when the enemy is on the... Up front, attacking your everything. What do you do? Hele masatoka. A lot of people, they give up. A lot of people, they think that God has left them. But I just want to go to the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. If you can give me that in uh, King James Version. Hele mahas. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. I am about to finish. I am about to finish. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mighty. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. At that time when the enemy is coming against you, listen to what even the Bible says. The Bible says resist the devil. That's the time to resist him. That's the time to be strong. The Bible says be strong. Let me talk to you, my brother and my sister. There is no other moment in your life where you need to be strong than that moment when the enemy is coming against you. When the enemy is coming against everything that you ever, you ever confessed, everything that you ever, you, 
you ever believed in, when he's coming against that, when he's hitting against you, listen to me, be strong in the Lord. That's the time to be strong in the Lord. That's the time to stand and show that you are unmovable. That's the time to stand on your faith and on the word of the Lord. That's the time to stand. Listen to these weapons. Listen to these weapons. Verse 11 says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wines of the devil. Let me tell you, the, the, the whole armor of God is not for you to attack. The whole armor of God is there. If you look at, uh, uh, the, uh, you number the, 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 the armor that we are given here, you, you, you realize that they are for defense, it's for protection. He says you put on the armor of God so that you are able to stand. Can I talk to my sister listening to me right now? God is expecting you to stand at a time like that. God is expecting you to stand when things are like that. The Bible says after having done all, you stand. So when the enemy is coming like a flood, what you need to do is not to make a lot of noise. You need to stand. Stand, verse 18, verse 18, verse 18, verse 18, verse 18 for me. Therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, beloved, there is a day that is called an evil day. And according to the Bible, don't think that it is 24 hours in a day. And an evil day might be five years. An evil day might be three years. An evil day might be three months. An evil day might be three hours. An evil day might be an hour. But there is a day called an evil day. And on that evil day, the heavens are expecting you to stay. To stand, having done all, having done prayer and it's like it's not working. Having done intercession, it's like it's not working. Having done praise and worship, it's like it's not working. Having de- declared and decreed scriptures and they are not working. But you stand. Stand and say, I am unmovable. I stand on the rock that is Jesus. I stand here. If I die, I die. But I'm standing. I cannot bow to the devil. If I die, I die. If I lose, I lose. But I am standing. I pray for a people that are going to stand in the middle of a storm. And you say, I am standing. When the enemy comes like a flood. But you say, I am standing. I cannot denounce my confession. I cannot refuse my confession. I cannot change my confession. I cannot change who I am. I am the child of the most high God. I believe in the God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. As you are standing, you must know one thing. God is coming for you. God is coming with a miracle. Verse 14. Wherefore Stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, and having the breastplate of righteousness. Listen to this. Listen to these weapons. Listen to these weapons. The first one says, Stand therefore, stand with your loins, your loins, your loins. Where there is your breathing power, your loins. Girded with the with the truth. Let me tell you, faith change, but truth does not change. These are the days when things are like that. You stand on the truth. What is the truth? God is the omniscient God. God is the all-powerful God. Stand on this truth. God will never leave me, nor forsake me. Stand on this truth. Stand on this truth. God will never let me down. Stand on this truth. God is still alive. Regardless of what I'm going through. The Bible says, put on the belt of truth. I, I, I I speak to somebody today. I know you are going through a bad time. I know things are not okay. But stand on the truth. Be unmovable. Stand on the word of the Lord. Be unshakable. Be unshakable. Look at the devil in the eye. And tell him now might be your chance. But I know my chance is 
coming. So look at the devil in the eye and say, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. Listen to me. What the devil does is that he gives the enemy the beginning because he knows the beginning is not the best is the ending. But he then gives you the end of the matter. You, he who loves last, loves longer. I want to talk to somebody. Stand at a time like this. I know my sister, the Ghana is coming against you. People are actually mocking you. Others are saying, where is your God? Others are saying, is your God even alive? Sometimes even your mind is mocking you. Your mind is telling you, you believed a lie. But I'm here to tell you, stand on the truth. Don't be, uh, don't be shaken. Don't be movable. In Jesus' name. And then say, put on the breastplate of righteousness. My God. Righteousness is a defense. Jacob, one day when he's talking to Pharaoh, he says, my righteousness will speak for me. My righteousness will fight for me. You see, the breastplate, hallelujah, protects the, the, the most essential, the most important part of the human being, the heart, the, the, the liver, my God, the kidneys. I'm here to tell you that your holiness will protect you. Your holiness will protect the most important inheritance about your life. Hey, my God. I'm running out of time here. Give me verse 15 before I close in the Old Testament. Your feet short with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Can I jump that for today? Let me tell you, this all is about defense. So God says... You, you, what you all need to do is to stand in defense. Verse 16, is to stand in defense. Quickly, verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith. This is defense. Taking the shield of faith. You, you know the enemy is coming about, uh, is, is attacking you. But just like Abraham, the Bible says he did not stagger at the promises of God. But he believed him who called things that are not there as if they are. I want to prophesy to somebody. I know the enemy has been coming and lying to your life and speaking lies and speaking accusations and coming to you and telling you are finished and telling you God is not there. I'm here to tell you that the devil is a liar. Take up the shield of faith and like Abraham tell him I am unmovable I will not stagger at the promises of God God says I'm coming for you he's coming God says I'll deliver you he will deliver me God says I'll set you free he will set me free let me conclude by this Job chapter 42 verse 10 let me tell you this is how this battle is fought remember Elijah and the prophets of Baal. The prophets of Baal, they had the whole day calling on their gods, doing it what, whatever. But when it was Elijah's time, Mayandokoyama, he just prepared the, the altar. He called the fire. Less than five minutes, fire came down. And the battle was over. I want to talk to somebody today. Seasons are shifting. Gold posts are shifting. I remember of a gentleman called Daniel. They took him and they threw him all night long. He was in the den with the lions. And in the morning, the king said, Daniel, did your God that you serve, serve you? And Daniel called unto the king and said, God sent his angel. And his angel closed the mouth of lions. And the, the king said, Daniel, come out. But those who were persecuting you, it is their turn also to go where you have been. I'm here to announce to somebody. I announce the end of your persecution. I announce that your night is over. My Bible says, sorrow may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I'm here to talk to somebody. The season of the night was long. The enemy has got coming after my life. But when it is morning, David appears. When it is morning, a Elihu appears. The Bible says, as from Job, the book of Job, chapter 35, there is a man who appeared, and his name is Elihu. And he started to say, I have an inspiration from the Lord. He was announcing the change of seasons. And today, God has sent me with 
with an inspiration upon my life to announce a change of season. For too long, the enemy has been buffeting you. For too long, the enemy has been pulling you. For too long, the enemy has been bossing you. For too long, the enemy has been vexing you. But I come against that vexing spirit. I say the gates you have changed. I say to Goliath, you had 40 days to vex the army of Israel. But David has arrived. He doesn't need 40 days. He just needs a moment. I announce in your life a breakthrough that you cannot hit under a table. A miracle that is unstoppable for all your suffering. May God multiply your victory seven times for all your trouble. May God announce your greatness seven times more. I decree over your life. This is how this battle is fought. The enemy is given the first half, but the second half is very short because when our God arrives, in a twinkling of an eye, the enemy is on the ground. In a twinkling of an eye, Goliath is on the ground. In a twinkling of an eye, I want to conclude by saying, when you see God promoting your enemies, you must know he now is finishing them up. He is now finishing them off. When you see God promoting your enemies, it is a setup for God to finish and wipe them off. You know a guy called Haman. My God, he played his games with Mordecai. Just one day, the king could not sleep. And God turned around issues. And, and in the same gallows, where Haman wanted to hang Mordecai, he was hung. On those gallows. I decree today. I decree trouble to your Goliath. I decree trouble to your Haman. I decree trouble to your enemy's job. The Bible says, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job. Job 42 verse 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. When God allows the enemy to attack you, he is seeking for a reason, for an excuse to bless and increase you. So everyone who was under attack before today, get ready for expansion. Increase your tent to the left. Increase your capacity. God is coming for you. When you see God delaying, when he comes, he comes for you bigger. He comes for you greater. He comes for you mightier. I want you to declare, and I declare as I'm closing right now. I pray I pray for everyone who was going through warfare, who was going through warfare, they are not understanding. Uh, today I decree and I declare that today God is turning around your captivity, that today God is changing things to all together, that the time and the season and the moment of your enemy is over. David is arriving. The good Lord bless you wherever you are hearing us from. This is a week of celebrations and testimonies. You shall see the fall of your Goliath. You shall see. You shall see the greatness of the Lord in your life. As you wake up today, this week, I want you to be crazy. Just put on praise songs wherever you go. Even when the enemy comes like a flood, just begin to put a praise song and dance like nobody's business. Your captivity has come to an end. I decree and I declare in Jesus' name. The good Lord bless you. We meet again next week. Hallelujah.